Well, there's some bad news hitting the stands for SoFi stock. So we have to discuss what it means both in the short term and the long term, how it impacts the stock price more importantly. And there is some massive shadiness going on too that may or may not be hurting the share price as well. Let's go over all this today, guys. I'll give you the good, the bad, what it all means to the share price, and I'll also let you know, am I buying more SoFi stock or not? Just make sure you like the video if you like getting the truth without the hype. And honestly, guys, thank you very, very much for hitting that like button early, all you guys out there that do that. It really helps the channel, so thank you. And check out the pinned comment down there for my new channel where we talk about financial freedom and retiring early. It's the pinned comment down there if you want content about that. All right, so let's get rolling on the news for SoFi because there's been a lot of big news this week. So first, two key executives leaving SoFi. Now there's actually been two key executives leave in just the past few weeks here, guys. And when one leaves, I don't really get concerned. That sort of stuff happens. People take on new opportunities. There's all kinds of reasons behind it. So it's nothing I really even think about it. But when two key executives leave right around each other, kind of back to back, it absolutely throws up a flag that you've got to investigate a little bit further because is there friction with the management team? Is there issues in the direction of the company? Is there something else going on altogether and people are just bailing ship before it gets too bad? Or is it something that just honestly doesn't mean a whole lot? That's why anytime this comes up, your job as an investor is to analyze exactly what's going on and do some digging. That is part of your continued due diligence in a stock is to go digging into the information about this sort of stuff. So first up, we had Aaron Webster leave. He was actually the chief risk officer for a little while there for SoFi, and he actually got demoted down to an EVP position before moving on to PayPal. Now, obviously, I'm sure he got a huge raise to move over to PayPal. And to me, obviously, if you got demoted in the first place, it makes sense at that stage in order to leave. Now, maybe that wasn't considered a demotion. Maybe it was just an internal move while he transitioned out. We don't have that level of detail there. Basically, he could have told Noto, hey, I'm getting ready to leave. So they immediately made the switch over to something else to kind of help transition them out and move somebody else into that spot. So that way they could get the right guy in the spot moving forward while he basically waited on his offer from PayPal or whatever the heck goes on there. Again, we got no actual details, but just based on what I saw there, it makes sense for him to leave. I mean, if I got moved from a C-suite position over to an EVP position, although I'm sure it pays very, very well as well, it would definitely be something to where I would be looking to move on and move elsewhere. So I can kind of make sense of that one. And is it concerning? Uh, I mean, it could be, but it's definitely not something I can point to directly. I mean, your chief risk officer, how many of them can you actually name with any company out there? I, I'll, uh, man, put it down in the comments. I can't name a single one. And I've been doing this for a very, very long time. And I cannot remember the chief risk officer for Apple, my favorite stock of all time, where I basically know all the executives at stage. Can't name them, sorry. So to me, it's a loss. Sure, big loss. Eh, I don't really see that in my eyes. But then we had Chad Borton leave as president of SoFi Stock, which of course, that's a much bigger deal. But again, this is where your due diligence tells you the actual story. Because on face value, that looks bad. It looks bad seeing a C-suite executive leave and then the president leave right afterwards. But that is where that due diligence comes into play. If you went and read the filings from earlier on, you'd see that when he was brought on as president, it was strictly one, he was brought out of retirement to take this job. Two, it was brought on to help them transition into the banking sector. Now that we've kind of not only successfully transitioned there, but it's off and it's running and it's going really, really well, it makes sense that it's time for him to step down again, whether that's back into retirement, obviously he said to chase other ventures, whatever the case is at that stage. To me, when I saw that initially, it was never a permanent spot because why would you come out of retirement to take a permanent job somewhere? I mean, look, you're retired. You want to challenge, sure. You want to help out, sure. But at that stage, once you get it going, you get it going in the right direction, it's up to somebody else to then execute the vision moving forward. And you kind of step out at that stage and go do something else. That's the whole point in getting to that retirement phase in the first place is to be able to do what you want, when you want, and how you want. So to me, this wasn't a surprise whatsoever. This is another giant nothing burger in regards to this. But I do understand people being cautious when you see two executives leave at right around the same exact time. But what does this mean to the stock price? Well, this is where there's actually more to this story than meets the eye. So first off, uh, you know, it's never a good look whenever two executives leave, regardless of what the reason is. But then when you also understand in terms of the timing of this, it times out perfectly with these shares that these gentlemen earn through their options, through all the other bonuses and everything else that they receive. They just recently had all those shares actually get vested, which means it goes from an option that you're going to get in the future to where now those options are there. So of course, one, they got a tax bill that comes along with that, that they got to pay. And they're going to pay that with those shares. And B, it means now they can leave and go on to whatever the next phase of their life is 
because you don't leave ahead of that. You're not going to leave all those shares back with the company. You're going to wait until they vest and then you're going to choose to leave at that stage. So in terms of the stock price, that is part of the reason why we've been seeing some downward pressure on the stock itself. Now, obviously it's not all of it. We'll get into a lot of, a lot more other things that are putting downward pressure on the stock here in just a second, but it explains some of those little movements there, but more importantly, it's not really gonna mean anything to the share price, obviously in the long run. Like I said, it's kind of a bad optics look. Of course, I'm sure somebody, you know, I don't know, you take your pick. Somebody's gonna put out a negative article, negative news, whatever out there saying, oh, oh, we got problems over there. Look at all the executives fleeing and all this other <laughs> garbage like that. Just ignore all that sort of noise. If you do the work and you dig in there, you see it's really not a whole lot there and every single piece of it is explainable more importantly. So on to the second piece of news that just dropped for SoFi. That would be the convertible notes were more expensive. Now, if you're looking for more details on what the convertible notes are and kind of a simple breakdown of what it is, check this video right up here. We don't, yeah, it's a whole nother video right there to get into in regards to the mechanics of the deal and what the heck was going on there. So check that video out up there if you want the details. But essentially you're retiring the old note for a new note with shares that are actually hedged on the backside as well. So it's a great, great move. This was a huge positive for the stock in regards to getting these convertible notes converted over to this new note. Saves them a ton of money. And more importantly, it adds to the bottom line right now. But there's a big problem because they estimated it to cost them 61 million shares of the stock, but it actually in the end, when it actually executed, cost them over 72 million shares of stock in order to execute this agreement. We'll get to kind of the shady dealings behind all that in just a second here, guys. Just hang tight, hang tight. But the point is, this deal is not nearly as good as it looked prior, and it got a lot more expensive as we move forward. So obviously, that's not good. Well, how does this impact the stock? Oh, well, Wall Street didn't get it when it was announced in the first place, and they beat the stock down for it, despite the fact it's actually a positive. And they're probably just going to take that as another reason to beat down the stock right now, because of course, they're just going to see it's supposed to cost 61 million, but now it costs 72. Sell, 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 sell. That's kind of the way Wall Street works. So in the short term, it, yeah, it puts downward pressure on the stock, but you have to understand what this actually happening and with the actual convertible note going through and everything, regardless of whether it was more expensive or not, bottom line is it actually saves them money this quarter. There's something tangible coming to the bottom line this quarter in regards to this. And of course it saves them a lot of money in the future versus having that older note there still. So this is a net positive all the way around, but of course it's going to put downward pressure on the stock because of the way it's going to be perceived by Wall Street. Remember, Wall Street is dumb and earnings are what matter, not what Wall Street thinks or how they perceive something or anything else like that. Long-term, who freaking cares? The bottom line is this is a net positive for SoFi stock and it's a good deal, just not as good as it was before. So kind of think of it that way. It's still a good thing, not a negative or anything else like that. It is still a good thing, just not as lucrative as it should have been for us at the beginning. But there was some shady stuff going on around all this that kind of created this scenario where instead of it being 61 million, it's 72 million. So let's talk about that next because there's a lot of misconceptions about it. There's an important lesson there. And then we'll talk about whether or not I'm gonna keep buying the stock or not. So what are these shady dealings? Well, I have seen and I have heard all the conspiracies around the Delta hedge and everything else kind of going on around this convertible note and everything that's happened there with the short sellers, which we had a long discussion this morning in my group about short selling, where I basically laid out the truth about every single piece of what short selling means to your stock, means to your company, how it works and everything else like that. But you can go back and see that conversation if you join my group that's on sale right now and the sale is getting ready in guys here in just a few days where you get that, you get direct access to me anytime you want. You get to take five free courses. You can see all my buy and sell alerts in real time, my complete watch list with price targets. You get access to free coaching. You get access to a stock analyzer tool completely for free. You get access to the best six, seven and eight figure discord out there, guys. There's so much involved in the group. Make sure you check out the pinned comment and get your membership before the sale ends and the price goes back up. I'm not gonna turn this into a lesson on short selling and hedging and all that sort of stuff like that. There, there's no need for it. It's too long. It's too complex. But what I will say is, is that this is not unusual at all. This not only was a smart move by a lot of the short term investors out there, but it's also very, very, very common and typical with these types of deals. The management team knew that this was coming. They knew that, you know, most likely the stock was going to get moved in some different direction in order to make this deal even sweeter because that's the right play in regards to a known event, right? We knew that the convertible notes were coming. We knew all that sort of stuff ahead of time so they can play games around it, which is what Wall Street traders do. Meaning there's nothing nefarious. 
there's nothing devious. There's nothing, you know, there's no vast conspiracy out there or anything else going on in regards to this stock and in regards to what happened right here with SoFi. It was typical business as usual and everybody was aware it was going to happen ahead of time. The difference is, is that you hope that it didn't have as big of an impact as it did and you hope that other things and momentum and a lot of other things going on in regards to the stock actually work more in your favor than they did in this case for SoFi. It wasn't just people playing games with this convertible note that caused this downtrend. There was a lot of other factors that contributed to the downtrend being a little bit harsher than we thought it was going to be. In these particular scenarios, there are times when you actually get a better deal because the stock actually goes up and of course the shorts get burned, the price pumps even higher, so you actually end up having to put less shares into the deal than what you thought you had with the short sellers playing the same exact game that they played with SoFi. So sometimes it works in your favor and you actually get to do something cheaper than you thought you were gonna get to do. And of course, sometimes it works against you like it did this time where you end up having to give up more shares in order to convert the deal. This time, unfortunately, it went against us and it went the other direction. More importantly, this is still a great deal for us as shareholders and we're going to see the results of that as soon as the next quarter. So am I buying or not? Well, this one's quite simple for me. Is the company still executing on a high level? Yes, I believe that they are. Despite all the noise and the downturn and everything else that's kind of gone on around all this, earnings are actually going to get better. And I can make sense of the executives that left and kind of see the reasons why, and I'm not concerned with that. And more importantly, Notto is still staying with the company. So again, to me, there is no executive risk there as well. So of course, I'm going to continue to buy this stock. And if you wanna see all those buys on SoFi in real time and see my complete watch list with price targets that has SoFi on it, and you wanna take advantage of the free coaching that we have, take advantage of the brand new stock course that'll take you from zero to a master of the stock market, jump on all our live Q and A's where you can ask me anything, come to all our events that we have, be a part of the best six, seven, and eight figure discord out there. Make sure you take advantage of the pinned comment because guys, there's so much more coming to the group. I'm so excited to announce it. So make sure you check out the pinned comment down there. Get your membership before the sale ends and the price goes back up. And click this video here if you wanna see exactly what I'm buying in this market. And click here to see my exact plan for this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.